Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. The enigmatic Kailasa Temple at the Ellora Caves in Maharashtra, India has fascinated researchers for centuries. As the world's largest monolithic structure, it is without doubt one of the most breathtaking sights on the planet. It is often overlooked or at least overshadowed by sites such as the Giza Pyramids of Egypt, Stonehenge of England, the Mexican Pyramid of the Sun, Gebekli Tepe in Turkey and so on. But this is certainly one of humanity's greatest architectural achievements. With Stonehenge, people dragged huge rocks and stood them upright. With the Kailasa Temple, they removed hundreds of thousands of tons of rock and shaped the resulting structure to perfection. Mainstream scholars claim the ancient caves in this region date back to between the 5th and 10th centuries AD, but many believe they are far older, being not hundreds, but thousands of years old. The fact is, nobody understands how this particular temple was built, as it clearly exhibits a far more advanced technology than what we are told the people of India had between the 5th and 10th centuries. It is cut out of solid basalt rock, leaving this incredible structure that totally boggles the mind. It is thought to symbolise Mount Kailash, the Himalayan abode of Lord Shiva, one of the most important Hindu deities, and it is just one of 34 cave systems that has been excavated from the surrounding bedrock in this region. This particular temple is thought to have been built during the reign of Krishna I, a ruler of the Rashtrakuta Empire in the 8th century AD, taking just 18 years to complete. It is estimated that a total of 200,000 to 500,000 tons of rock were excavated out of the vertical cliff, and another mystery is where the basalt went. It seems to have vanished without a trace, along with the tools used to build it. Based on the accepted history, if people worked a 12 hour day every single day for 20 years to build the temple, they would have had to dig out no less than 20,000 tons of stone a year, which equates to 1,666 tons a month, or 55 tons a day, or 4 to 5 tons every single hour. And then of course, it had to be taken away, and the remaining exposed rock had to be intricately carved to be a temple fit for a god. Many who have studied it believe it was excavated vertically, so that it was possible to achieve the end product. They state that the builders started at the top and worked downwards, carving out one of the most fascinating ancient temple complexes on earth. And, as it was a bedrock excavation, there was zero room for error, and on inspection, no errors were made. This is sophistication to the highest order. But what did the builders use to create it? What tools were at their disposal? How did they manage to do it, and why has the knowledge been lost, if indeed the mainstream is correct in their dating? The mainstream attests that hammers, chisels and picks were the only tools that were used, but this isn't limestone or soft sandstone, it is crystalline volcanic igneous rock. According to a medieval legend told by the Marathi people of Maharashtra, the Kailasa temple was actually built within a week. It states that a queen whose husband was very ill prayed to Shiva, asking the god to heal her husband, and in return, the queen would build a temple and dedicate it to him, and fast until it was completed. The queen's prayers were answered, and she fulfilled her vows, and as the architect, known as Kokasa, was so concerned about the queen's fast, he said he could carve the structure within a week, and legend says he kept to his word. According to H. P. Blavatsky, many of the ancient temples in the region date back much further into history than what scholars believe today. An M. K. Davalika, a notable Indian historian and archaeologist, suggests that the Kailasa temple has been adapted and carved by different people over a long period of time. Like many ancient structures, he believes there are many phases of work that gives it its final appearance. One of the pieces of evidence that historians use to date it is an engraving on a perforated window in the west wall of one of the caves, in which we find an incomplete Sanskrit inscription of Brahmi script. It does give the genealogy of the Rashtrakuta dynasty, but all this proves was that the cave was there in the 8th century, not that it was created at that time. Many of the inscriptions in this region have been weathered badly and there are no documented claims to its creation. Like the Great Pyramid of Egypt, which is not inscribed with the identity of the builder, the Kailasa Temple offers the same problem for historians. 
Whatever the true history behind it, the resulting Kailasa Temple is a masterpiece worthy as a tribute to the gods. As well as the accomplishment of creating the structure as a whole, many of the individual sculptures are breathtaking works of art in their own right. In the courtyard there is an image of Nandi, the sacred cow of Shiva, who is facing Shivalinga, traditional features that are found in all temples dedicated to Shiva. There are 100 foot tall pillars of basalt and at the base of the structure we see exquisitely carved elephants, created to give the impression that the whole structure is being supported on the backs of these magnificent beasts. Furthermore, we also find scenes from two major Hindu epics, and in the southeastern gallery of the temple there are 10 panels depicting the different avatars of the Hindu god Vishnu. The temple also has bridges, a rainwater harvesting system, an intricate drainage system, hidden underground passages, secret peepholes that can be used to hide and then spy on people, balconies, as well as huge staircases which branch off into multiple levels of the structure. And remember, it is carved from the bedrock, with no stone blocks added. All of this had to be planned carefully before work even began, and there are no clear errors. It is truly a work of perfection. There is another legend that dates back to the Mughai period, which mentions the structure and states that during the reign of Emperor Aurangzeb, an attempt was made to destroy the temple. Apparently, 1,000 workers were sent to dismantle it, and after three years it suffered just minimal damage in the form of a few broken or disfigured statues. On realising it was impossible to destroy the temple, apparently the emperor gave up. We know that the Kailasa temple is just one of a number of carved ancient caves and temples in this region, but it is also worth noting that nearby there are also many carved ruins which are submerged beneath the waves, and these may date back to the last ice age, when sea level was 100 metres lower. These ruins are detailed in Graham Hancock's fantastic book Underworld. Earlier, I mentioned the temple's connection to Mount Kailash, the supposed Himalayan home of Lord Shiva. The mountain is apparently unascendable, and no human has ever scaled this sacred site, and therefore, as you can imagine, many legends surround it. A number of researchers, scholars and scientists believe that the top part of the mountain is in actual fact the remnants of a truly ancient pyramid. Mohan Bhatt, a Sanskrit scholar based in Mumbai, says the Ramayana refers to the sacred mountain as a pyramid. Some ancient texts refer to it as the cosmic axis, or the stairway to heaven. Some say that Lord Shiva himself is buried inside it, and that the area is the true city of the gods. Russian scientist Ernst Muldyshev went on an expedition with geologists, historians and physicists to learn more about the secrets of Mount Kailash. The team came to the conclusion that it is a massive ancient man-made pyramid, surrounded by many smaller pyramids. Mordyshev believes it was built by an ancient and advanced people who knew about things such as the law of subtle energy. He says that the mountain is the most important part of a system of ancient monumental structures, directly connecting sites such as the Great Pyramid of Egypt. Some researchers believe that the same long-forgotten ancient people that built the pyramid of Mount Kailash also built the Kailasa temple, and that their relationship in name is not coincidental. Whatever the true history of the Kailasa temple, there is certainly something wrong with the archaeological interpretation of this site. Either our understanding of the technology of the 8th century is completely wrong, or the time frame attributed to the Kailasa temple is wrong by hundreds if not thousands of years. However it was done, it is undoubtedly a tribute to ancient Indian craftsmanship and aesthetics, on an exceptionally grand and breathtaking scale. Apparently there are thousands and thousands of ancient Sanskrit texts still waiting to be translated, so maybe the secret of the Kailasa Temple is waiting for us to find. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.